he's looking for the mistakes. Anything coming from Ajagba. And I like the fact that Shaw stands his ground. He, he controls the center of the ring. That's what he needs to do if he's going to win this fight. And he often controls pace in his fights. He averages 51 punches per round to his opponent's 26. Shaw trying to come around the guard with a right hand. Trying to test F.A. Ajagba early. He's to testing see if the he defense. Can, if, he can te if he can test the defense and test the chin. Swept the left hook as well. And then back to the body, just touching with the jab as Ajagba. But Shaw's not a guy that wastes very many punches. Very no. economical, as you mentioned, Joe. And he wants to know that he can land before he throws. He's smart, too. He catches on quick. Catches on to a fighter's rhythm very quickly. You see his eyes pinpointing right directly in the eyes of Ajagba. Good jab. Good jab. Shaw snapping that head with his jab. Good jab from Majago. Splitting the guard. Shaw inching forward for a moment. But you see the adjustment right away. You see Shaw bring that lead hand, that backhand forward. Open it up a tad bit to catch the jab, to parry the jab of Ajagba. Nice jab by both guys exchanging. It's a good fill out round for both men. Not a whole lot going on. Right hand trying to go to the body to close it. Can't wait to see more. Want to welcome everybody who was watching the NFL playoffs to top ranked boxing on ESPN. This is round number two of our heavyweight main event between the power punching F.A. Ajagba, you see him in the blue trunks there. He's got 13 knockout wins among his 16 wins. And Stephen Shaw, the undefeated American from St. Louis, who's been waiting for an opportunity like this. Winner tonight should land a significant heavyweight fight to come this year. Want to remind you, NFL Rewind, the playoff edition, will be coming up after we finish things from Turning Stone Casino here in central New York. Ooh, that was nice, smooth movement right there. Well, that wasn't too robotic from F.A. Jogba. Usually he's really tight with his offense and extremely robotic, but that was smooth, that transition downstairs with the stab jab and the, one, the right hand coming right behind him. No fighter wants to make a mistake because nope. they both know. That one punch landed in the right spot can end the night. See, even though Ajagba has the reach advantage, Shaw, he's quick. He has the speed advantage. He can get his jab in and out of range, get himself in and out of range quickly with his jab. It's a nice up jab right there from Stephen Shaw. Yeah, getting in and out of range can overcome reach almost all the time. Yeah, How many well, times have you seen a shorter fighter that as long as he commits to the jab, doubles the jab on the way in, yes. uses his feet to get in, it doesn't matter. Or you can get your head off to the side, get right. your head off the line, and shoot the jab behind the jab of a jogba at the same exact time. But you step in a little bit deeper, but your head off the line, you won't get hit with his jab. concern I have for a jogger right now is that he's not moving his head. You see different movements and angles from Shaw. You don't see a lot of that defensively from F.A. You see subtle movements, but oftentimes he's punching and he's leaving his head right there. Shaw is watching that too. Stephen Shaw firing off that right hand behind the jab moments ago. Back to that 85-inch reach of a jogba. See, in close rounds like this, the, the best thing about a job is he's busy. He's busy. He's consistent with his jab. Even though all those jabs are not landing, he looks like he's controlling the action. He's thrown 26 more punches than Shaw to this point. We come to the end of round number two. 
Top ranked boxing on ESPN, our heavyweight main event. New York, not far from the International Boxing Hall of Fame. We're at Turning Stone Casino. Joe, Tim, and Dre on the call with you ringside. Our heavyweight main event, round number three between Ajagba and Stephen Shaw. Stephen Shaw, who told us yesterday, I have to be sharp. I have to be smart. And I have to put my hands together. I have to let them go. There's a right hand to open up round three. Reminder, NFL Rewind, the playoff edition will be coming your way once we finish up with top-ranked boxing. If you want to continue on with your evening of boxing, we invite you to join us for the state of boxing on the ESPN app. We will review Frank, our entire punch, night, back, give you all clean, the news and analysis back, going on in the sport, including the latest on Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk, the undisputed heavyweight championship fight that we hope will be announced soon enough. Let's check in with Bernardo. This is a battle of jabs so far, but Bashir Abdullah says, look, F.A. cannot fight going backwards, but he wants Stefan Shaw to set up the second shot over the top of F.A.'s jab. He's exactly right. F.A. Jabba, is stiff, he's tall. You know, he, he doesn't get his head off the line like Dre alluded to early on. He doesn't. Even when he punches and after he punches, he keeps his head on that center line. And Shaw right now trying to anticipate that jab so he can come over the top with his own right hand right now. There it is. There it is. There's the right hand trying to come over the top of the jab from Shaw. Interesting. You hear the corner report from Bernardo, but an interesting matchup of trainers we have here. Jago works down in Houston and sometime in Vegas, but with Kay Karoma, who was with Shushu Carrington earlier tonight, of course, we've seen with Shakur Stevenson and so many top flight fighters through the years and some Team USA work as well. And Stefan Shaw is with Bashir Abdullah, who's the two-time Olympic head coach for Team USA, longtime U.S. Army head coach and Team USA Worlds. Got a lot of respect for Coach Abdullah. He doesn't get a lot of respect in the in the pro game just yet because he doesn't have a bunch of guys, or at least the guys that we've heard of. But that man is responsible in big part for my gold medal and the way he was poised in that corner and the instructions he gave me. And you hear him giving the same instructions to Stephen Shaw tonight. We asked Kay Karamo what he was most concerned about yesterday. He said, Bashir Abdullah. Listen, these guys know each other from the Olympic program for years. It's nice to hear that kind of respect between coaches. It is, Mark. Shaw looking to get that right hand to the body and then back to the jab with the jog to the body as well. It's good seeing these big men exchange jabs the way that they are in this first three rounds. Shaw's doing more off the jab than a jog as I think Shaw's looking to set a jog up with a big right hand with a left hook to follow. Wait, and I mean, what an honor it is to be side by side with the two of you, so fresh into retirement, to knew, know that you are both sharing that great honor of being boxing Hall of Famers, and what an honor it is for all of us on this crew to have you with us. It was interesting yesterday in spending time with Stephen Shaw as we begin round number four here, because Stephen Shaw comes from a boxing family. Uh, he's with his grandfather. His father was a fighter, and he grew up watching the old tapes with his grandfather. So he's, he has such an understanding that here it was the biggest moment of his career, his professional life. He took time out yesterday to spend the morning at the Boxing Hall of Fame. And, Drake, he was getting very emotional in discussing it. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with soaking up some extra inspiration. Um, you feel the presence of those guys walking in that building. I mean, it, it's so much greatness in that place and in the memorabilia and the and the fist that have been casted. I mean, you can't help as a fighter to feel that and to take that with you. And he, he wanted Ooh. to take that with him into this fight. And Jogba, two punch combination. Pretty even fight as it stands right now here in round number four. Yeah, but that's not a whole lot of variation from a Jogba. No, not there isn't. Left hooks. He's attempting that right hand. He landed one just about a few seconds ago. A Jogba, they traded right hands. Whose big shot is going to get there first? And you see the sense of urgency now coming from Ajagba. He's coming forward now and trying to push the pace. Just spoke with Kay Karoma in between rounds, and that right hand is key for F.A. Ajagba. He wants him to use it more, but he also wants him to faint and get into a rhythm because he wants that right hand to neutralize Stephen Shaw's combinations. 
But Jogba's got to throw that right hand, even if he doesn't land it clean. You got to throw it to keep the hands of Shaw up and let Shaw know that I will let this right hand go. Then the, you'll be able to get, that'll open Shaw up for a clean right hand. But right now, Jogba's just waiting just for the perfect opportunity, and he's allowing Shaw to get comfortable in the meantime. Up jab from Shaw moments ago. As you can tell, Jogba, you said a sense of urgency just trying to close here. There's a sweeping right hand that was off the mark. See, that's a missed right hand, but it's not a bad right hand. It made Shaw react. It made him get out of the corner and exert some energy, and then it can set up a clean right hand up the road. Got to make some deposits for up the road. If you're F.A. Ajaka. If you want to land the right hand, you want to throw it towards the body or the chest area of Shaw. Don't throw it towards the head. The head's not going to be there. The body is a bigger target to hit. Double jab right hand. Shaw just getting out of the way. See, but the, the sheer aggression of Ajaka is winning him this round. He's staying consistent. Ajagba was here and come on, I need you. Wake up, wake up. They think their fighter can offer a bit more here. You see the total jabs through four rounds. That has been the pressing matter early on in this heavyweight fight. Round number five scheduled for ten. Shaw nice with the counter. right hand over the top, countering that jab of a Jogba. Think if Shaw's gonna win this fight. He's going to have to come out of himself a little bit and take more risk. We said this at the top of the show that he's going to have to find that other gear. This gear is sufficient for the first few rounds. But if he's going to pull ahead, if he's going to put himself in a position to start piling up enough rounds to win on points or to land a big shot, he's going to have to come out of his comfort zone. But that comes with a lot of risk, Dre. Right? It sure does. It, it comes with a lot of risk. I mean, he cannot afford... In the heavyweight division, you can't afford to make a mistake because that mistake might cost you the fight. Listen, man, you can do both. You, you can be more aggressive and be responsible at the same time, but no risk, no reward. Well, that's that's exactly what you heard from because you, Because you could also get knocked out playing it safe. And perhaps now taking just a little more of a chance. It's called a calculated risk, not a reckless risk. Good him, jab, him taking his fight against the jock, but is a risk. And he couldn't have taken it quick enough. Opportunity presented itself with an injury to Oscar Rivas, and Shaw said, yes, I want this. A jock, but taking the fight against Shaw is a risk. This is the heavyweight division. Good jab by a jock, but. But Coach Abdullah said the right thing. A guy who's used to coming forward push him back and see if he's the same guy. That takes risk. But Abdullah also said, don't let him gain control. He's, you need to get your offense working. But he's doing that by allowing Ajagba to press forward and to start getting comfortable. And you know he gets comfortable when he starts to let that right hand go. That's what I think Coach Abdullah is alluding to. Start seeing shots like that come off. We've been trained as fighters to think you stay away from and stay on the end of power. And I was taught to attack it and see what they can do about it. I was taught both ways, Dre. Attack it, sometimes take it. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit of both. I mean, yeah, it's a little bit of both. <laughs> Go towards it. But the only way that, that power and that mentality will respect you is if you attack them and they, they feel your presence. Oh, you take their strength away. Mm -hmm. Great conversation, guys, from two Hall of Famers. How to deal with power. Once again, just listening into the corner of a Jogba, they are imploring him, Tim, to let his hands go. Yeah, but there's no variation. No measure, no measure there's no. Step step I need to let his hands go, but there's no variation in his combinations. I mean, Shaw can see the one-two coming. You know, there's no hooks, there's no uppercuts, there's no body shots, there's nothing else to to fend against. It's too easy for Shaw, a thinking fighter like him. And to be honest with you, Tess, I would love to see some more variation for Shaw. I mean, he's not going to the body of F.A. He's not taking things in the inside, you know. Ooh, he stood well him up. placed. He stood him up with that. Did you see the legs lock up yes. just for a second? The lights turn off just for a split second, then they come back on. My question is, did Shaw see it? Oh, he saw it, but it's still the wrist. Still a lot of wrist. 
in the corner of Stephen Shaw, his father, Brian Shaw, said, use the double right as your jab. Initiate your combinations there. You have to vary it and not start everything off the jab. Big moments ago, actually, a jog his right hand, got him a little bit as he tried to shake it off against the ropes. Can we see a jab hook right hand from Majagba? Has he been taught exactly that? exactly what his corner was looking for. Jab off the hook or hook off the jab. I know what you're saying about wrist, Tim, but Shaw has a lot more action, I believe, offensively if he wants it. Well, I, I don't think Ajaba has a, uh, after watching film, he doesn't have a, a really, uh, you know, prolific inside game at all. He doesn't fight well on the inside. All he looks for is to tie up. Shaw can take it in the inside. Even mid-range, I haven't seen a Ajaba counter Break, no punches. when Shaw's on the way in. I see him defend himself, and that's what you want a puncher doing, trying to defend himself. So he has action, and Shaw has quicker hands so he can get to the target a lot faster, but you also don't want to be on the end of the power of F.A. Ajaba, just like he was up against the ropes with that straight right hand to the body. And I'm not a fan of that high guard usage, especially against power. You got to make you got to make that punch miss. Let it. Let all that that energy go into the air. Don't allow that to allow this man to touch you with that because it drains you. Even though no, it's not landing. It still drains you physically. There are certain rounds you can differentiate by a punch or two depending on who landed the best shot toward the end of the round. But a lot of these rounds tests are hard to score. I agree with you, Dre. Nip and tuck, pick and poke, back and forth. As are the punch stats. They line up with that. Neither man bearing it up much as we come to the end of round number six. <laughs> Stephen Shaw knows as well as anyone there are more heavyweights than there are dates for them. He's 30 years old. He's been waiting long enough. He's more experienced. He's quicker. It's time for him to get busy. Yeah, he talked about that, Mark, in the lead up to this fight of always struggling to get the opportunity, viewing this as the potential for a breakthrough. He's been Deontay Break, no Wilder's punches. sparring Thank partner nice for the last fight. five years. He okay. feels very Black. confident with the success he's had in a camp against uh, arguably the best puncher of the last 25 years in the division, never going down. Always felt like he's had huge potential he needs to tap into and deliver on. His corner, we just hear Bashir Abdullah say to him, hey, beautiful work right now, four more rounds of it. Meanwhile, in the corner of Ajagba, they want to see combinations. They think they're going to be able to get this done if he just throws with combinations. Right hand from Ajagba. See, that's, up against the ropes. see so that's nice right there. He's just letting it go. He's not loading up with the right hand, and you see it found, it found a home for his zone. When you load up a guy like Shaw, he's going to see it coming. But when you just throw it right from the shoulder, it's going to land. But Jogba believes that he has to throw hard to land hard, and he doesn't. A big, strong guy like that with a 10-ounce glove, all you got to do is throw the punch like he just did, and even though it's quick and sharp, it will still hurt and do damage. Shaw looked like he falling asleep a little bit, Dre. I, you know, I... Honestly, he got his hands low. He feels confident in there, but all it takes is one. <laughs> See, and there's a ton of opportunity, to your point, Dre. There's a ton of opportunity for Shaw to land offense, but he's not committing, like you're saying. When he makes a Jogba miss, he has to try to make him pay. And impress the judges with it. Bashir Abdullah just yelled to Stefan Shaw, get out of counter mode and make him pay. Be first. So that's all I'm saying. It's a mentality. And it's a certain point in the fight where all your dreams, everything you've complained about, everything you wanted, it's right before you right now. But you cannot assume that anybody is going to give you anything. you got to go take it. And that involves risk. Not being first right now. No, he's not being first. And he's, he's just eluding that right hand, getting away from it. But, man, that right hand... Sooner or later, he's going to find a home. I like the way Ajagba is fighting in this round. He's rebounding. He's suppling out and loosening up yes. and starting to throw. Not combinations, but more fluid punches. Shaw is taking small steps forward. He does fire off and leaves. Hmm. 
recorded a TKO victory over Guido Villanueva with one big right hand. He didn't throw many, but he made that one count. I'm just glad they got, the, got it right. You know, boxing don't always get it right, but when they do, it's exciting for me. Round number eight of our heavyweight main event, F.A. Ajagba, Stefan Shaw. Ajagba with a 60 to 47 connect advantage. He's landed 50 of 226 jabs thrown. See, both fighters have all the motivation they need to step forward and try to close out these next three rounds because whoever loses, your pay skills is getting messed up. You're not going right. to make the same in the next fight as you made this fight. Your status, your rankings, everything. Good shot right there from Shaw. All of that should be enough motivation to step on the gas and close the show. For, the, for that Ajagba's name could be attached to Daniel Dubois or Joe Joyce, we've heard that Shaw could get an opportunity if he wins against Jared Anderson. You just got to do the math in your head. If I don't get my hand raised, this is what happens. If I do get my and then you go from there. It's not hard math. That'll it's make it fight, huh, Dre? It's easy math. It's a yes. decision to make. You, you got to make that your decision. Your status, your legacy, your family, that's enough. Jaga finished with the left hand that time. Back to the jab. And a good jab. What it is is the consistency, the, the consistency of a jogger that's giving Shaw problems. Just touching him. Just touch, touch, then keeping something on him at all times, either to the body or to the head. And Shaw has not followed his corner's advice in recent Woo! rounds. Of the lead more, and there's the combination from a jogger. And it's not like Shaw is breathing hard. No, nope. he's not even breathing hard. I mean, he should have plenty in the tank to let the hands go and be on the front end more. Opportunity to punch between punches. F.A. in these last two rounds, he's looked like the better boxer. He has. More movement from Shaw, but better offense, fl more fluid offense from F.A. Ajagba. All behind the jab, disrupting time and rhythm. Steady fundamentals. That's it. Stephen Shaw, F.A. Ajagba heard his corner with Kay Karoma say, believe in yourself, believe here. Stephen Shaw was listening to his corner simply say, be smart. Jabs through eight, distinct advantage for Ajagba. He has been steady throughout with the jab. Shaw has more action and more food on the table to eat if he wants to eat. F.A. Ajagba has more food on the table to eat if he wants to eat. Who wants to eat and who wants to close out these next two rounds to leave no doubt? Seeing no mustard on Big Shot. He's tired. Them stab jabs are starting to pay good dividends. You can see no offense coming from Shaw. No, there isn't. You got heavy hands like a jog, but you just put those shots on the money. There's it times where Jogba, yeah. Adre, is almost borderline measuring with that yeah. left hand, isn't it? Yeah, and then he's bringing a shot right behind it. But because it's not a big shot like we're used to seeing him throw, he's not taking himself out of position. So he's under his feet. He's always in position, just like that. That's a sweeping shot. But Shaw felt it. Did it hurt him? No, but it piled up a point, and it kept F.A. Jogba in position. Crowd not happy. Oh, I, I mean, shoot, I'm not happy, man. I'm about to fall asleep, too. Dang. They talk about all this stuff and how much it means to win and all that. And then they go in here and they, they do this. Man. No sense of urgency from either of the guy. I mean, I see of Jeff Ed Java, he's trying, but he can do a little bit more, a lot more. Heard them say, F.A., start working. 
When you see what I noticed is is when you when you work your hands with FA, he gets all out of position and he can't retaliate. He doesn't know how to punch in between. He hasn't he hasn't learned that yet. He hasn't mastered that yet. So if I'm Shaw, I'm letting combinations fly. And I don't expect anything coming back. Then I'll get out of range. See, no punches coming from. Nope, that's my point right there. No punches coming from a jogba right there. No punches. Step back. Box. Ooh, nice right hand. Right by hand Sean. to the body. Yes. Over the top with a right hand to close it out. Punctuate that round. Three, two to three. Right hand. Left hook. They want more offense. Will they get it here in the final touch three touch minutes? Touch or will this be the moment that Stephen Shaw has been waiting for? Can he hit the accelerator just enough to try to get the win here and stay undefeated as an emerging heavyweight? Ooh, good right hand. Again. See, that's what FA Ben should have been doing from day one. Shoot that stab jab, but also coming with the right hand down to the body. There's that jab again from Ajagba, and as you can see, his jabs alone have outlanded Shaw's total punches. Ajagba has more landed jabs than Shaw has total landed punches. There's that measuring left hand. Let's put it this way. If Shaw loses this fight, man, <laughs> he gonna kick himself in the butt. He gonna go back and he gonna watch this fight and he gonna say, man, I shoulda, coulda, woulda. I shoulda stepped on the gas. I coulda done a lot more. You never, ever wanna have to feel that way. You always wanna leave it all in the ring. He's 30 years old. Not sure if he's gonna get another shot, Dre. This is the opportunity he was looking for. This is the phone call that he always wanted. And he got it, and he could have done more in this fight. He's got the skill set. It's not a reach to say that. And he just was content with doing what he's doing these last four or five rounds. But that was, all, that was always your concern, even coming in this fight. I remember you saying it on the phone call. You know, Shaw does just enough to win, but not dominate. A fight. Do you remember yesterday when I turned to both of you and I said, hey, being with him in our meetings, did you get the sense that this is the finish line, not the starting line? <laughs> yep. Got it. You just don't know. Ooh. Shot right there. You just don't know. You got to see him fight the fight. You just don't know. That was a good right hand right there. A real good right hand. But I think both guys could have done more. In this fight, you yes. got to follow up. Shaw gonna try another big right hand before the round is up. That's the money punch. Right after Ajagba throws his jab, right hand right over the top. Ajagba head is right there to be hit. Try to sweep that right hand to the body. There's the clap. Who wants to let him go? Right hand off the mark. They go the distance of Jogba and Shaw. Jogba outlanded him. Out jabbed him by wide margins. We'll take a short break. Well, if NFL Rewind coming up, you'll have the state of boxing on the app for all the news and analysis and review of tonight. As Top Rank Boxing on ESPN is presented by AutoZone. Get in the zone. And in part.
Look forward to that. You know, Stephen Shaw, I think, could have used a wild kind of finish, but he just didn't offer it here in this heavyweight main event. Does he regret that? Let's hear from the judges. Here's Mark Chanel. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds here inside Turning Stone Resort and Casino, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Eric Marlinski, John McKay, and Don Trella all score the bout 96-94. For your winner by unanimous decision, the silent roller, F.A. Ajagba! So F.A. Ajagba gets the win. Two fights removed from his first loss, but he had the elbow surgeries. He felt like he could put forth the plan. He did so with steady work from the jab, out jabbing him 90-48 to in connects. F.A. Ajagba now the 17th win. NFL Rewind coming up in moments, and we will have the state of boxing on the ESPN app.